The Bengals are going to Las Vegas to take on Derek Carr, Max Crosby, and the Raiders. Let's break it down. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Bengals fans, and welcome to another episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. I'm your host, Jake Lisko, along with your host, James Rapine. Today, we preview the Bengals' trip to Las Vegas to visit the not Oakland Raiders. I actually don't think I've called them the Oakland Raiders once this week, which is, frankly, shocking. I, I didn't think I was ever going to get this right. But the Las Vegas Raiders, quarterbacked by Derek Carr, with Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro, a uh, draft crush of mine, Brian Edwards, a wide receiver over there, Max Crosby, Yannick and Gakwe playing really well at the edge. So there's a lot of good players on this team. They're five and four, just like the Bengals in a similar strong division in a similar position of the same position in the AFC playoff race. And as we discussed earlier this week, James, this game has massive playoff implications. The Bengals win. It's like plus 17 in playoff odds. If they lose, it's minus about 17 percent in playoff odds so a very big game coming up as the bengals make their way west for the last time the the last time zone change i believe on the schedule this year and it's going to be interesting to see if the bengals play like a desperate team because i keep thinking about how kevin stefanski said that before the browns game and obviously the browns handed it to the bengals and the Raiders should be desperate this week. They've lost two straight. We talked to Q yesterday about that. And so both teams in, in very similar situations. And I think close in talent, right? You have some question marks coaching wise. And so it, it's going to be, it, it, this could end up being a really, really good game. Um, hopefully it, it is a competitive game. I, 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 well, I guess the Bengals fans are like, well, I'd take a blowout, which I understand. But to me, it would be cool if it was a competitive game and, and you will see if this team comes out with the sense of urgency that I was hoping specifically on defense. Cause on offense, they were moving the ball up and down the field against the Browns. Uh, but you can't really see urgency on offense. It's hard to, to see that part of it unless you're in a two minute drill. I want this defense to come out with some urgency because if they don't, then Joe Burrow might have to drop 45 to escape Vegas with a win. And let's start with the defense then being on the field. There are a couple things that we should probably talk about when the Raiders are on offense. One of them is Derek Carr's actually having a really good year by most measures. And it's easy to dismiss Derek Carr, I think. But the Raiders have been like a prolific passing team. And Derek Carr, I believe, has been a prolific deep ball passer this year. So that's something to keep in mind. But... When you look at this team, they are banged up in the trenches and Gabe Jackson and Rodney Hudson, former standout veterans on their offensive line are not playing for the Raiders right now. Alex Leatherwood has moved from right tackle where he wasn't very good to right guard where he's still not very good. And really looking at their offensive line with some of the injuries they've got, it's, it's Colton Miller and some guys that when you look at it, you think the Bengals should have their way. Everywhere mm -hmm. except for left tackle, maybe where Trey Hendricks and Colton Miller will be strength on strength a little bit. And and honestly, I think Colton Miller probably has a bit of an edge there just from a, a size perspective. But we'll see. Trey will probably get some of his as he usually does. But the rest of this defensive line, in terms of bottling up Jacobs with if he plays, which I think he will, he's questionable. Mm -hmm. he and and getting pressure against the rest of this. Raiders offensive line, at least something to be desired will probably be pretty important in disrupting Derek Carr because he does have weapons, even without Henry Ruggs and, and everything going on there. You know, they add Deshaun Jackson. I talked about Brian Edwards, Hunter Renfro in the slot has been lethal. And Darren Waller is a tight end that can make you pay as much as any tight end in the NFL. Yeah. My fantasy team loves from Hunter Renfro PPR leagues, man. Number 13, just coming up big for me. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to start him this week, but I just might. And that's where Mike Hilton's going to have to step up. I think Mike Hilton's well, – we talked about Jesse Bates overachieving, underachieving. I think Mike Hilton's been a little underwhelming, you know, and certainly in coverage. And not that he was great in coverage uh, with the Steelers, but I don't notice the impact plays in the backfield. And if you're not doing that and you're not great in coverage and you're not forcing turnovers, well, then what the hell are you doing? And so 
this is going to be a good test for him. Uh, and that's the thing. You're right. Even without Henry Ruggs, and I know Deshaun Jackson's 34 years old, but that man runs like I do to the cabinet to get a built bar. I mean, the dude can still fly. And so if that's the case, yeah, I would, I would beat Deshaun Jackson to the cabinet if I was racing him. I know someone's going to ask that. Zero chance does he beat me if we're racing to a built bar. Uh, it's going to be a, a challenge, I think, to slow down all these guys. But I think it starts with Waller it, because Q was on yesterday. He talked about how Waller's been almost underutilized. Well, if I'm the Raiders and my back is against the wall and it's this must-win game after dropping two straight and you're dealing with a lot of the, you know, this tragedy and you're, you have a new head coach that you didn't have at the start of the season and all this stuff's going on, but you go to what is, is most – um, not only most effective, but you're most comfortable with. And I think that would be Derek Carr to Darren Waller. So hopefully the Bengals have a good uh, package and then a second package and then a third and fourth plan to slow down 83. And I think I asked Chidobe Awujie that on Thursday, and uh, I think he's going to be matched up with them one-on-one at times, but he's not going to be shadowing Darren Waller. And so that's uh, – who knows? Maybe we'll see the, the Trey Flowers treatment like we did with Mark Andrews early in the, the game against the Ravens. If, well, actually, I don't care who it is. They're going to need to dedicate multiple resources to, to seven Darren guys. Waller. <laughs> uh, it might be a few too many considering, you know, the number of players on a football field. But yeah, I mean, your, your hyperbole gets a point across, right? Like this is the primary <laughs> weapon. It's yep. the most targeted receiver for the Raiders. When I watched a few Raiders games earlier this year, you're right. That's where Derek Carr goes with the football when he needs a play. And I think that's probably changed since I stopped watching the Raiders so much. They were on TV, I think, a lot nationally early in the year, playing some high-profile games. But Hunter Renfro, second most targets on the team, and catches a whole lot more of those passes, as you would expect from a slot guy versus a vertical tight end, the way they use Darren Waller. But both of these guys, you need to be ready for it. Hunter Renfro is, is likely to get his. This is a guy that, especially in slot matchups, unless you've got, you know, your prime Leon Hall or more recently Chris Harris is out there. These slot guys generally get theirs if there's a plan for them, which is why it's so weird for us as people watching and covering the Bengals and Tyler Boyd that Tyler Boyd hasn't gotten his as much as you would hope. But those two guys are going to have to deal with. I, I do think that, you know, the Raiders run game, it'll be interesting to see if they can get that going at all. And, and Josh Jacobs clearly a very good player, but, I just, you know, they they they've had these issues on the offensive line where I expect the Bengals in the trenches to win that matchup and bounce back in their front seven in run defense, which has been an area where they've had some issues the last couple of weeks. Yeah, you, you certainly hope that they can contain Josh Jacobs and uh, and contain Kenyon Drake because one, the Raiders have been so pass heavy that if if they get going on the ground then it's going to open up a bunch of stuff. The play action to Darren Waller, I, I don't want to have to deal with that. Like, could you imagine if Luana Rumo, they're looking up and they're like, all right, Jacob's averaging four and a half a carry, and now it opens up the play action to 83. That Good luck trying to stop him if that's the case. So I, I agree. Over the past couple of weeks, the Raiders haven't been able to run it. They need to make sure that is the case again. And, and if it is, uh, you know, where they, they can hold the, the ground game then hopefully they'll be able to get after Carr a little bit. And, you know, that would be the next step. But And, I and hopefully it, they can do it without blitzing. Sorry to cut you off, but Derek Carr, like Joe Burrow, has been good against the blitz this year. The Bengals don't blitz a ton, but they have blitz this year. And so if the Bengals can get that pressure with the Sam Hubbard, with the, the right side of that offensive line being what it is for the Raiders. If they can get after him without blitzing, I think that's pretty important. The other thing you mentioned that I wanted to just touch on really quick, cause I have a stat for you is uh, play action. The Raiders only go play action 18 and a half percent of the time. That's a pretty low number. I would say Derek Carr really good in those situations in terms of his statistics, but doesn't do it very often. So to your point, take away the threat of play action a little bit and try to get after him with four. And, and that's a formula. If you can contain the running game. And the other thing was, and Lou Anarumo mentioned it Thursday, is the fact that the Chiefs got on top of the Raiders early, and, and that helped take away the play action too. And so, obviously, we, we'll talk about the Bengals' offense, Joe Burrow and company, but that uh, that can go hand in hand for sure. Absolutely, and we'll probably go there next. We'll talk Bengals' offense and 
some of the keys when Joe Burrow's guys are on the field coming up next. Hopefully you're not driving to Las Vegas, but if you are driving from Cincinnati to Las Vegas, get upside is the app for you. In fact, if you're driving anywhere, that means you fill up your gas tank, maybe weekly, bi-weekly, every couple weeks. Well, bi-monthly, you can save money every time you fill up with get upside up to 50 cents off on your first fill up right now. If you download the free app, get upside and use promo code touchdown. And then after that, it's up to 25 cents per gallon. Every time you fill up, that's free money. That's easy money. That's money you can spend on Bengals tickets, built bars, uh, you know, maybe sponsoring the locked on Bengals podcast, like get upside. So check them out right now. You can download the app in the App Store or Google Play and use promo code TOUCHDOWN and you're going to get up to 50 cents off on your first fill up per gallon. It's a lot of money. It's going to add up quick. Again, save money right now with Get Upside. Hopefully we have some long haul truckers or something listening that have downloaded Get Upside and are pocketing, <laughs> you know, I don't Can know how many imagine? gallons of gas go into those trucks, but it's got to be a lot. I hope they're eligible. I hope they're eligible. Let's talk Bengals offense, James. And I, I think that there's some overall notes, like get off to a good start is, is a big one, right? But before that, I think you look at matchups and the obvious ones that stand out and the ones we've been talking about this week when we have talked about this game and you talked with Q about yesterday are Max Crosby and Yannick Ngakwe. And that duo mm -hmm. is one of the better edge rushing duos that, or in the NFL that the Bengals will face this year. And they faced some really good defensive lines, some really good individual players, and they just got done dealing with Miles Garrett. The good news is you have two above average tackles now. Mm -hmm. This isn't, oh man, Max Crosby, Bobby Hart on the right side. It's <laughs> Max Crosby, Riley Reef. And I'm sure Max Crosby has a chance of of racking up some pressures and and you know, like I said with Trey Hendrickson, getting his at times. But you feel better. I feel better about Reef and Williams against Ngakwe and Crosby than, you know, if it's Bobby Hart and, and after Jonah Williams gets hurt last, last year and it's Hakeem Adenergy and a, and a carousel left tackle too. So you feel better about this matchup. And it's kind of strength on strength more than it has been in recent years. Yeah. I mean, what if, what if you're, it's better than facing like the, you know, an Aaron Donald, Geno Atkins type on the inside right now where your weak link is on the offensive or on the, yeah, on the offensive line. And instead you're most confident to me in the edges and left guard. And so, yeah, I, I think it's, it's a matchup that could determine this game though, especially if it is high scoring. And I think there's a, a more likely than not scenario where it is, you know, I, I don't, I haven't looked at the bet online over under, but I, I could see 60 plus points being scored on Sunday. And so when you're in shootouts like that and you're forced to drop back or, or pass or put the, you know, that's, that's the tough part. So I think part of it too is going to be balancing things out and getting Joe Mixon going on the ground, getting the, the quick game going a little bit. So you're not saying, all right, Jonah, all right, Riley, 45 times, 45 dropbacks. We need you to hold your own and not give up multiple sacks and a bunch of pressures. And Joe Mixon likes running the ball against the Raiders to that point. And the Raiders haven't been great defending the run this year. And it looks like Nick Kwiatkowski is still not going to be playing this week. Denzel Perriman, a solid run defending linebacker and a thumper, a downhill guy in the in the mold of Ray Maluga to, to some degree for, for Bengals fans that have a frame of reference. But uh, to, to confirm the over-under this week for you, James, I've got bet online open over here, 50 and a half is the over under which is the second highest in the nfl the this over. week uh the only one higher is dallas and kansas city at 56 so yeah i'm taking uh, the over very high over under level. generally and hey they also have it as a pick em, in case you're wondering they don't have it as a, a favorite so bengals wow. road the bengals neutral. were favored the bengals were favored earlier in the week so all right there you go the betonline.ag books wants an even bet to bring in more bets. So there you go. Uh, the other thing that looks interesting, we, we the, the obvious first thing that we look at with this team is how is the offensive line going to match up? The interior of the Raiders defensive line, as you alluded to, doesn't scare you too much, but they're players that are paid to play in the NFL and get after quarterbacks. Quentin Jefferson is a familiar name. One of the players they have in there. And 
you know, probably an average interior defensive lineman. But the other thing is going to be, can they find somebody to pick on on the outside in the passing game when they do pass the ball? Yes, getting Joe Mixon going and leaning on Mixon a little bit in this one might make a lot of sense because the Raiders haven't been good defending the run. But in the passing game, not only do they have these edge rushers, but Casey Hayward and a guy named Nate Hobbs, who is a fifth round rookie from Illinois, has been playing great corner in the slot and Casey Hayward outside has been really good. So they have a couple guys that have been playing really well at corner this year. And then they have Brandon Faison playing the other outside corner position. And that's where you would target. So it'll be interesting to see if they shadow, if they, if they stick Casey Hayward on Jamar Chase and say, hey, follow this guy around, especially on the perimeter. And if they don't do that, and I'm Zach Taylor and Brian Callahan and Joe Burrow, I'm looking at it and saying, can I get Brandon Face on and Jamar Chase singled up without safety help, without Trayvon Morig, who's their better safety between him and Jonathan Abram, over the top? And if you can, well, maybe we can celebrate some Jamar Chase verticals for the first time in a few weeks. Yeah, for sure. And that's the thing is the Bengals, the way they're built, I don't know if you want to shadow Chase with Hayward, you know, maybe you just, you know, get, put a safety over the top, like you mentioned and, and roll that route. And then you have Hayward on Higgins. I mean, it's tough. It, it's tough. It's a pick your poison type thing. Now Chase is obviously having the better year, but I expect Higgins to you know, have a, a better eight games than he did the, the first half of the year. So we'll, we'll see there, but I think that this offense needs to find a way because we haven't seen it where all these guys are at least involved some. Chase might be able to, you know, have have the, the deep downfield stuff, but does it have to just be like Chase where the switch is on and that's it? Or can Boyd have his fair share in Higgins and it just be uh, more even? And I'm not saying you got to pick where you're going or anything like that, and sometimes the defense does dictate it, but it might not this week, you know? Like if, if, if Hayward's – Traveling with Chase, I still think Chase is going to win his fair share there. And and then Higgins should have his, you know, a favorable matchup. And I still like Boyd to win his fair share in the slot. So that's something I, I'm looking for to uh, forward to, to seeing here in the second half is how this trio kind of settles down and, and evens out a bit in a good way versus it's it's T Higgins getting 16 targets this week and then chase getting and you're going to have games like that but i don't think it needs to be every week like that i think you can have eight ten and ten or something like that between the three and that's what's so great about having the trio right when the matchup dictates or the coverage dictates the ball goes here the ball goes there this is a look they give you joe burrow has guys that he trusts and guys that are fairly reliable the browns game notwithstanding or, or maybe we just forget about the Browns game a little bit. Guys that are pretty reliable and catching the football, getting open, getting to the right spot, and being where he wants them to be. You don't see Joe Burrow getting after his starting wide receivers the way you see Aaron Rodgers yelling at some of his wide receivers and tight ends from time to time when they're not where he wants them to be. Where if you watch the Packers, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I, I do think that that'll be interesting. And so not only is it Tyler Boyd, and we talked to Brian Callahan and Zach Taylor has been asked about this a lot in the last week. How do you get him going in the second half? How do you make sure he's getting his? Do you go back to that Haas wide juke that we talked about earlier in the year that we talked about with Callahan? It's also getting Mixon going and making sure that they are committed to the run game. And, and part of that goes hand in hand with game script and how the game starts. And these are some overarching themes that I think we can talk about with this team as we wrap up our preview going into this game is can they get off to that fast start and well the coin flip luck return because ever since that streak ended it's been a little bit dicey so we'll get into some of those themes coming up next but first i gotta tell you about the number one protein bar on the planet built bar and look i it, it's so funny if, if you see you know, I see a listener out. They always seem to mention built bars and I eat them once a day. Uh, I had a pumpkin one earlier today, pumpkin puff built bar. And that's the awesome part about them is they're high in protein, low in sugar, low in calories. And they have all these unique limited time flavors that keep it fresh. 
Plus they have their staples, the nine staples, whether it's raspberry, mint brownie, coconut almond, salted caramel. So they have something for everyone. So check them out right now if you haven't. And even if you have, go there again because there's probably something you haven't seen at built.com. Use promo code LOCK15 and you're going to get 15% off your next order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Bet Online also remains a sponsor of the Locked On Bengal podcast and your number one spot for all your football and basketball betting action. Maybe you're into you know some MMA stuff instead, some some UFC stuff, some NHL betting action. They've got it all. They've got all the sports. They've got all the games. They've got all the props, and it's all in one place on an updated website at BetOnline.ag. And if you sign up today, we've got a bonus on your first deposit. Use promo code locked on. You're going to get a 50% deposit match on your first deposit when you sign up at betonline.ag. They've got all the sports, like I mentioned. Go browse their long list of props. Find the bet that's right for you. And if you're a gambler, check out betonline.ag, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online is where the game starts. All right, James. So we've talked a little offense. We've talked a little defense. We've talked a little mix and we've talked a little balance for the wide receivers. The one trend that I want to mention real quick before we move on from the offense is according to pro football reference. And from what I can find from individual charting from pro football focus, the Raiders don't blitz and Cleveland similarly didn't really blitz Joe Burrow in the passing game. So while we're talking about the passing game, before we get off it all together, the Raiders don't blitz because they've got Max Crosby and Yannick Ngakwe getting home. And not yeah. really just those two guys, but primarily those two guys. And that has at times been a challenge for the Bengals. So they need to be ready for another team that wants to rush four, will sometimes get pressure with just four and put seven into coverage. And so that'll be a, a theme to watch this week is how do the Bengals deal with their second consecutive opponent who isn't going to try to blitz Joe Burrow to make him uncomfortable. They're, going to do the opposite and let their edge rushers try to do their work. But that, that kind of leads into the other big theme of the season. I feel like we could have talked about it every week and we haven't talked about it every week. And, and that's game script and getting off to a fast start. And this has been a pretty chronic issue for this team. We like the scripted plays against the Browns. You go back to our film review after the Browns game, you'll hear Mike and I talking about how, this for the first time this year, it was they moved the ball really well for two drives. They had a good plan for those two drives. That will need to keep up this week. And you know, does any part of you wonder if the coin flip stuff that they've won so many in a row and now they're not getting to kick off the ball at the beginning of the game, if, if that has had an impact on this team a little bit? No, no. Um, but right. I, 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 I will say this the coaching staff clearly prefers, you know, Zach prefers you know, getting it out of, out of the half. But no, I mean, because they, they whiffed, they got the stop they needed against the Browns when it was 24-10 out after the half, and then they went three and out on offense. Um, that, that's the thing is like, yeah, the bad start, the defense better show up on Sunday because they didn't show up against the Browns. Look, I, I, I get it. Zach's going to defend, you know, the offense put them in bad positions. It was 7-7, seven to seven, and the defense had 10 minutes to breathe, Okay. And it, Baker Mayfield and Nick Chubb and company went right through you and, and scored a touchdown. So they're going to have to put up some resistance on, on Sunday. But as far as the edge rush is, is concerned, you're right. If you're down and these guys know you're going to pass the ball and they're teeing off, it's going to be tough on Riley Reef and Jonah Williams. It just is. But I will say this, and, and, and along with the good start, you said it at the end of uh, our last segment, getting Joe Mixon going, testing these ends in the running game, really hammering that home. I, I think that's such a key on the road. You, you want to silence the crowd after, uh, you know, a big touchdown drive by the, the Raiders? Well, take it 15 plays and, and just patiently work your way down the field. And why do we think that that could happen? Well, what you just said, the scripted plays against Cleveland, they were just able to matriculate the ball down the field. And so hopefully we can see that same thing on Sunday. It would be good, you know, pull off, pull off a, who was it? Washington, Washington football team that had the 10 minute drive to close out the game. I mean, how about, how about a 10 minute drive 
to close out a game and getting to the the run game a little bit i, I just want to pull up the dvoa numbers for the raiders defense in in terms of defending the run and and it'll take me a second to get there unfortunately james but no you're uh, good I, you you're good get there but just in general, think about it. If you want to test those, those, those edge rushers, you know, and that's a, this to me could very much be a, a Chris Evans package too, where where you're testing them in the screen game, you're running it, uh, you're making them defend the run, and then when Mixon needs a breather, it's it's Evans time, it's Mister Captain America time. Yeah. So he, here we go. It's the Raiders actually rank better. In, in rush defense DVOA, which is their performance compared to average or replacement that, that football outsiders keeps track of, they're 16th in this category, and their past defense has actually been worse. So there you go. I mean, that, that kind of opens it up for the offense, right? And, and let the offense put their mark on this game. Let's see if we can get a nice complete game here from the offense and and – Joe Burrow and, and Joe Mixon can put it together, put the defense in a good spot to make some plays, see if they can change that turnover narrative they've been talking about this week. And Joe Burrow stops turning the ball over. The defense finds a way to take the ball away because the Raiders are going through adversity. You know, they're, they're in the midst of it. And you talked about the Raiders being a desperate team and, and them being backs against the wall. The Bengals, honestly... And, and you've talked about this urgency. The Bengals should feel the exact same way. Mm -hmm. They are in the same position as the Raiders. If they lose this game, it becomes very challenging. They have to win five out of their last, what, eight to, to be in a, a good spot at that point. Five out of the last seven. To it get would to be five wins. out of seven if they lose. Yeah. yeah, five out of eight right now. Yep. Five out of seven if they lose this game. So obviously a, a lot at stake here. And some things actually that make me feel pretty good about this matchup on paper is, you know, the Bengals improvement at the tackle position, their multifaceted attack on offense where they have all these different ways they can beat you. And, you know, the, the disarray generally going on with the Raiders and, and can the defense get back to form? Can the defense come out with a good plan to, to contain, you know, Darren Waller, keep, Hunter Renfro from killing them in the slot all game underneath like Mike White did with his receivers underneath. And can, can they figure that part of the game out? And can the defense get back on track? Because I feel pretty good about the offense in this one. And, and if they don't have a good game, then we're going to be back to the drawing board on offense. And it's a real opportunity, let's say, for the defense to bounce back after a couple of down weeks. Yeah, it, it is. And it's if they do, I mean, this is a real offense. This is a real uh, solid quarterback, solid offense, weapons really all over. Because like you, I like Brian Edwards. Obviously, I, Hunter Renfro, we talked about. We spent time on Darren Waller. So, but maybe the best pass catching tight end in the league. I mean, he's damn good. He's certainly two or three, worst case, which is uh, you know high praise. So it, it's, a, it's a challenge for the defense. And I think they come up short defensively. I just I think they're going to give up 30 plus and maybe they prove me wrong and come out and play at a high level. But my expectations, all that equity they built up the first seven weeks, it's gone for me. And so they're going to have to reprove it, whether that's fair or not. I don't care. It's my equity. I get to decide. But uh, as we move into this prediction, Jake. Can I can I point out a trend oh, before you give your prediction? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Jake's trend before James's prediction. Go. There are the Raiders have scored 30 plus points in one, two, three, four games this year. Mm -hmm. They won each of those four games. Mm. So, so there's your, there's your benchmark. They've only won one game this year when they didn't score 30 plus points. And they just scored 14 against the chiefs, 16 against the giants in their last couple of weeks. So there you go. There, there's your comparator. The Chiefs defense, which has been struggling all year, and the Giants, who are not a good football team, both of those teams held the Raiders to under 20. So if you keep the Raiders under 30, maybe that's all it takes. Man, it's the James playbook, right, about the 30 points per game. Look, talent-wise, if, if we were just looking at talent and uh, these two teams, I think they're evenly matched. The Raiders are at home. I'd probably take the Raiders. But – 
when you deal with what happened with Gruden and then they responded and they win a couple games and then you you have this tragic accident uh, in, in the Henry Ruggs' situation, I don't know how you get past that. And the only thing that's even compar- like comparable to Bengals fans, and it's a completely different situation, but in 2009, when you talk to people that covered that team when they made the playoffs – and everything that happened with Chris Henry's tragic death and everything like that. By the time they got to the end of the year, even though they made the playoffs, they were exhausted. The people that that covered, they were like, they were limping to the finish line. And so this to me is, is one of those games where I would probably in a normal, under normal circumstances, probably take the Raiders. Like I, I, you know, I, I probably would, but, I just at some point it's going to to falter. I thought it was going to happen with the Gruden stuff, and maybe it would have anyway. But then you have this Henry Rugg situation, which is just really really hard to overcome. And I know Deshaun Jackson is really really fast. Ruggs is really good, was really good, and so losing him from a football standpoint, I do think hurts their offense. Oh, man, I'm going back and forth on this, Jake. I, I'm going to take the Bengals, and it's not even football wise because I think Darren Waller's going to have a big game. I still don't know if the Bengals defense can try, uh, tackle Josh Jacobs, so there's that. But is this team really going to lose three straight? Are they really going to? And so I, I think that uh, they find a way. Joe Burrow and the Bengals find a way in a tight shootout where I have to rewrite the game story 57 times because of everything goes on. And I bet you there's going to be some turnovers on both sides and in some madness and Joey B and company get it done 38, 34 and hand the Raiders their first loss when they've scored 30 points this season. Is that what you said? Uh, You know, they've won every time they've scored 30. Well, now you you take that L. So, uh, Crush me, Bengals fans, because I just jinxed them. They're going to be 5-5 five and five now because I can't predict the damn thing. But I'll take the Bengals in a tight one. Just blowing out the over-under by like 24 points. You're, you're saying Vegas 24. is 50% wrong. You know, I, I feel good about this one right now on Thursday as we record this episode. Uh, <laughs> I, I felt reasonable. Jinx them away. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, as we do. Uh, I, I felt good about them go against the Jets. I I, uh, I don't feel as confident as I did when the Bengals played the Jets, and then they lost. They shouldn't have lost. But I do feel more confident than – or sorry. Yeah, I, and yeah. I feel less confident than, than when they played the Browns. The Browns, I had serious reservations about that game because of Miles Garrett. Because oh, you're, of, you're more confident than you were with the Browns. Yeah. No, less, less confident that <laughs> less confident than you were with the Jets, more no, confident yeah. than you were yeah, with yeah, the Browns. That's the one. I'm confusing yeah, yeah, yeah. myself. Yeah. There you go. Directions are hard. Yeah. And more by confident the way, than the I Browns think week, that makes sure. sense, like matchup wise. I, I do. Yeah. I think that part makes sense. It's it's because well they, they don't have the the same guys, you know, and, and the scheme is not as, as averse for the Bengals in terms of defending what the Raiders want to do. So in, in that respect, I like it. And, you know, it, can, can the tackles hold up? You hope so. Can they get Joe Mixon going? I, I feel like there's a better chance of that this week. And can they avoid a pick six on the first drive? You certainly hope so. And if they do, then maybe that Browns game has a totally different tenor to it. So these are reasons that I'm somewhat confident going into this game. I, I, you know, we'll see. We'll see how I feel Sunday. On Sunday when I woke up on that Browns game, I'm like, I don't have a good feeling. But today on Thursday as we record this, I hear your prediction. I think it sounds a little crazier than I think the game will be, but I feel I feel good about the Bengals' chances this week in riding the ship a little bit. And if they don't write the ship a little bit, then, well, we might have a long second half ahead of us. But let's hope we're going to be here that regardless. doesn't happen. And we are going to be here regardless, covering them all the way until week 18 bonus football, new bonus football. We'll be back on Sunday with a review of the Bengals game in Vegas, hopefully covering a win until then Bengals fans who day have a good one.